So last week, Al Michaels and Peter King made it the point to uh, to complain about the Philly fans booing the team at halftime when they walked off the field when they were playing like crap against the team that we hate the most in this town, Dallas. And we got put under fire because the, the fans at the game, because they booed. So how can you boo a team that just won a Super Bowl a year a year ago that finally gave you all what you wanted? Well, I'm sorry. This fan base isn't a bunch of lemmings that's just content with it. I guess you want us to be happy when we when we lose a game 48-7 to to the Saints. You want us to be happy because we won a Super Bowl the year before. So we have to be happy. We just have to take our ass kickings and say, oh, that's okay. We won a Super Bowl. You think other fan bases that win just are happy, you know, that that's all they want? That's, that's the only thing that, you know, they, they can never win again, that, that they're just content? Maybe some fan bases aren't. That's not the way it is here. We understand in this town, maybe more than any other, that winning is not easy, that it's earned. That you, and, and, and just because your team wins doesn't mean that you have to be satisfied with one championship because sports is about winning. That's what it is. Okay? Don't let some of these sports fool you when, they, when games end in ties, including football. Okay? It's about winning. At the end of the season, it's about winning that championship. And for much too long, the organizations in this town have not seemingly understood that. Didn't do everything necessary to win a championship. Championships, I'm sorry. Championships, plural. And in some cases, even one. You know, being aggressive. Making those type of moves. You know, that, that are going to enable you to win. Spending that money. That's going to enable you to win and have success. You know, having the foresight to draft well. And here's a thought. Some of those draft picks actually pan out for you. Whether it's in baseball, basketball, hockey, or or football. To do it with sustained success. Not just one season and that's it. And then that's the end of it. But sustaining it, becoming a here's a here's a novel concept in this town, having a dynasty. There hasn't been a dynasty in this town since I can remember. It's like we win one and then that's it. Phillies win in 08. We go a decade without winning another championship professionally until the Eagles do it. And I don't want to go a decade without winning something else. I mean, the Sixers had this crazy concept of, of tanking all those years to, 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 to draft those unicorn-type players. And to be able to do that means that you need the, as high a pick as you can get. And they did it. Now, it didn't work for all the players they got, but Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, okay. And then you add Jimmy Butler to that. Okay. The Eagles, years ago, moving up where they did in the draft to be able to draft Carson Wentz. And look, if he doesn't go down last season, he's the league MVP. This season, he's coming off an injury. I'm not giving him a pass. But I look at what he has around him in the offensive line, the struggles that they have had. They have not played as well, nearly, nearly as well as they played a year ago, helping this team win a Super Bowl, where they were the best offensive line in the league last year. They have regressed completely this year. It has been a joke. And I'm not just, I'm not using that as a crush for, for how Carson Wentz has played. And now he has put up some numbers, but not nearly, he has not looked anywhere near as far as the touchdowns go in the red zone, the offense, the, the schemes has just not looked anywhere where it was a year ago. Last season, we were doing what the Saints did to us last season. That was us. We were the Saints. We were putting up 40 points a game. This season, it's been night and day. It's been absolutely the reverse. And I know that a lot of blame in recent weeks has been going on to Jim Schwartz in this defense, and rightfully so. Rightfully so. Deservedly so. For, this, for, the, for, the, for the horrible schemes, for not adjusting, 
for getting beat, even with the injuries, you know, not adjusting to it, this D-line, not getting enough pressure even today, not getting enough pressure on the quarterback, no turnovers, not causing turnovers, not we're nowhere near what they were doing a year ago. And and they deserve a lot of blame. And Jim Schwartz deserves a lot of blame. He should not be here. How he survives another week, I, you know, it is what it is. He should be gone. And I totally agree with that. But look, Doug Peterson and, and the rest of this coaching staff is not without fault. They just are not. And they be and, and, and this offense is beginning a pass. And you see it every week. They're not scoring more than twenty points a game. And 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 I'm not saying that that's an excuse for this defense. But the, the the way this team starts offensively, it's the worst first quarter offense in the league. It's the in my mind, it's the worst first half offense in the league. Period. End of story. They're horrible, and it's these scripted plays that don't work. And what don't they do? They don't adjust. When something's not working, they keep going to it. This is the problem that we had with Chip Kelly those years. Mr. I, I reinvented the wheel. He never adjusted. The league adjusted to him. He never adjusted back. And we saw what that team did. Pathetic. That last year in Chip Kelly's year was one of the worst seasons I've, I've seen as an Eagles fan. It was absolutely embarrassing. The, the, the non-compete levels of that team. And I didn't see that after Chip Kelly left and Doug Peterson came here, besides maybe a handful of games, until today. That team didn't show up today. Embarrassing. I, I, I know the Saints are, 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 are a great team this year. Look, to the Saint fans out there, you're probably going to be in the Super Bowl this year. Because I can't see any team walking into that dome and beating you in the playoffs. Stranger things have happened, but I can't see it happening. I don't think there's going to be any Minneapolis miracle this year that's going to beat you in the playoffs, particularly in your dome. I think you have a hell of a team. I, 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 I've always respected uh, uh, what the Saints have been able to do in putting together that, that Super Bowl team those years ago. Drew Brees is a hell of a quarterback. I, I don't think he gets enough credit. I, I think he's a tremendous quarterback, and he's been through a lot, and been, been through a lot in that town since winning a Super Bowl. I, I think that organization has, has hit in the draft big time with who they got. They made the right moves, and they deserve where they are right now, and they deserve to go to a Super Bowl, in my mind, this year. And, and I believe that they will. Because I believe that they're going to have home field the way we had home field last season. And I think they're going to win the two home games and, and go to Super Bowl 53 and represent the NFC. So congratulations. Barring any catastrophic injuries from here on out, I think the Saints are probably going to be in the Super Bowl this year. And you know what? I won't mind watching them in the Super Bowl with that offense. And Drew Brees. He's a, he's a guy. You, he's a very rootable guy. Um, but that being said, I'm an Eagles fan. And I'm watching my team tonight not compete, not show up. Again, the same problems. Defensively, not making any, any adjustments. Offensively, we're just going to do these scripted plays that don't work. And, and, I, and, 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 and again, I understand it. Jim Schwartz got a lot of blame, and deservingly so. This defense deserves the blame they got. But so does the offense. It's a total team effort what they've done these in, in these weeks. And, 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 and today... I mean, it's like, it's like they never played the game before. You know, Carson's not without blame either. And and I'm not sitting here saying he's overrated and this and that. I, I still think he's a very good young quarterback in this league. But for God's sakes, it, it's got to be better. And I want to see better. And you know what? I know he can play better. And I want to see better from him the rest of the season. I'm not expecting this team to make the playoffs. I'm not expecting them to win a division. I, I hate seasons like this when you're going into Thanksgiving and you have this like apathetic look of the season, the rest of the season, of this just who cares type thing. It, it It's the worst. It's the worst. And particularly with football because there's only so many games during the year. There's 16 games. It's a short season. And to know that you're done... In Thanksgiving, and you still have over a month to go. It sucks.
but that's the card that were dealt this season. And and they have no one to blame but themselves. They got they got too high off the hog after winning the Super Bowl last year, uh, and, and I know fans have have pointed the finger at the organization saying they shouldn't have gotten rid of uh, Frank Reich and De Filippo. Teams lose coordinators all the time. We're seeing that for the first time now because for the first time ever we're a defending Super Bowl champion. And oh my God, we lost these guys. Why couldn't they keep him? Well, you couldn't keep Frank Reich because he got a head coaching job. He was an offensive coordinator and a damn good one. And he got a head coaching job. Why? Because of the success that they had last season. When teams have success, other teams pull those coordinators to become head coaches. Or in some cases, like it was with Filippo, went from being the uh, quarterback coach, I believe, to being an offensive coordinator with the Vikings. You know, getting a, uh, getting a bump on another team. Now, as it, as it turns out, the Eagles should have made him their offensive coordinator in, instead of Crow. Uh, uh, but that's what they did. Um, they they should have probably promoted D. Filippo to be the OC. I mean, Frank Reich wasn't going to stay here to be the OC. He was going to go to be a head coach, and he's done a very nice job with the Colts. Turn things around there. They're, they're looking pretty good right now offensively. They're doing the things that we were doing last season. And I get it. Uh, it is disappointing to me, but... Teams that have success don't keep everybody. Coordinators go, players go, but the good ones are able to, to, to replenish it. And unfortunately, what you're seeing this season is this front office was not able to replenish it. And in some cases, they, they, they took too much stock on older players who probably should have been let go. Uh, as much as I respect him, like Peters and like Darren Sproles, probably should have been let go. And instead, you keep LeGarrette Blunt. You keep maybe another uh, another player, maybe like a Patrick Robinson or what have you. Another player who who was a who was a big piece of the team. You know when they won last season. And and I don't even know looking at it if you keep LeGarrette Blunt if if that would have really helped so far this season. I don't think LeGarrette Blunt helps today in a forty eight to seven game. You know. Maybe there's a few extra first downs. Maybe there's even some more points on the board. But look, Eric Blunt isn't going to be, look, a 48-7 to game is a 48-7 to game. We lost to a better team. Period. End of story. The thing that bothers me is the fact they didn't show up to that game. They stayed in Philadelphia, basically, after they lost to Dallas. And they talked all week about, oh, now with the underdog and all the fans... Shame on you, the fans. Are you blaming this fan base? That's been let, let me tell you something about this fan base. Here's the difference. Okay? The pl players come and go. Coaches come and go. Organ front office uh, 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 owners come and go. These fans have been here. These fans have been here for generation after generation. They were here for Frank Franklin Field, for the vet for Lincoln Financial Field, and whatever stadiums they'll be in the future. Whether they're Kelly Green, Midnight Green, any shade of green, this fan base has always been with this team. It's one of the lifebloods of this town. And I've always said that, and I'll always say it. It just is. It's as big part of this town as the Liberty Bell. It's always been that way. These fans boo, they go on, because they care. And I wouldn't want it any other way. I've I, I've been in this area my whole life. When I had a chance to get my own place, I wanted to stay here. I didn't want to move anywhere else. I didn't want to go to the Midwest or, or to the West Coast or to the South or anywhere else in the East Coast. I wanted to live here. I want my life to be here. Because being in this area means something to me. It's in my blood. It's It's part of who I am. And I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. And I don't mean any disrespect whatsoever to Eagle fans around the country, around the world, who don't live in this area. But speaking as someone who does, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Maybe other cities win more and have more success, but I wouldn't want to be anywhere else because I love this area. I love where I live. And these fans, I, I've been up and close with them my, my whole life since I can remember. You know, I hear them on sports talk radio. I'm with them. We talk it. We live it. This this is a great fan base who cares about these teams. 
Even when teams kick us in the balls routinely, time after time after time, we're still there. It still means something to us. Now, maybe there's times of apathetic and you're not maybe going to games like the Phillies and, and the Sixers for those years when they were tanking, but it didn't mean we didn't care about the team. We've always cared about them, and we want them to be good. And when they are, we show you. We're there. But with the Eagles, they're always there. Winning seasons, losing seasons. I can say about the Flyers, too. Always. The place is always sold out. And that's a testament to the fans. And that's a testament to how much the, the, the teams mean something to them. And I'm not saying because the fans didn't show up for the Phillies this year, they don't care about the team. No, we just, we just knew what the product was on the field. <laughs> You're not going to fool us with what that is. He's a smart fan. <laughs> but it's a great ballpark. And I'll tell you what, I'm hoping, I'm really hoping, hey, they, they said they're going to spend stupid this offseason. I hope they do. It's not my money. Go get Bryce Harper and Manny Machado. Do what you have to do. Because those other teams that win, yeah, they do this too. So let's let's join the party. All right, guys? Let's join that party. The Red Sox learned how to do it years ago. Then they won four in the last 15 years. It helps when you spend some money. Oh, those Red Sox fans who complained about the Yankees all those years. Well, now you are the Yankees. How does it feel? See, it's not hard. It's not hard to spend a little bit on players and win. That's what you got to do. I'm hoping the Phillies do it. So, anyhow, but th th these these videos are not... And listen, again, it took time, okay? We had to go through tanking, the tankapalooza years, right? The, the ping-pong-palooza years with the Sixers, but they seemed to hit on two pretty special players in the draft, and now you got Jimmy Butler. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You put it together. Doesn't guarantee anything. There's still some great teams in the league, but they're going to be in the conversation now. And it's from going through losing losing seasons to get there. That's what you got to do sometimes. The Eagles won a Super Bowl last year, and they will always be in the debt to this fan base for doing that. Okay, the players, the coaching staff, whoever was a part of that team last season to winning that Super Bowl in Minneapolis – uh, against the Patriots of all teams, okay? always They will always be in our debt for it. But you know what? When there's time to criticize, there's time to boo, that's what we're going to do because this team means that much to us. And we want to see them succeed, not just one year. We want to have success, sustained success. And, and, and winning isn't a given. You don't just roll out of bed and win, Okay. You have to do the necessary things to keep winning, to keep on top. Those special teams, those special organizations, they're able to do it. This is a learning season for this organization. Across the board, front office, coaching staff, players, it's a learning season. Just because you win one year, it's not guaranteed the following year. You still got to do the things that's necessary to win the following year to stay on top. That means winning at the draft. That means getting the right players, keeping the right personnel. You're going to lose guys. You're going to lose uh, coordinators, but you have to be able to replenish that, that you lose. It's not always going to happen from within. You got to look outside sometimes. Pull guys from other organizations, other winning organizations, and and, and try to keep that, that balance. You know, not doing it, you see what happens. Disaster. This season's been designed, and I know there's been a ton of injuries, more so than last year. I get that. It's been a ton of injuries. Even in this game, you lose guys. Okay? The secondary, I don't even know how, how they're gonna, what, what they're going to do to piece things together in the secondary. They lose guys every week. And it happens. It's part of football. It's the unfortunate part of sports. You're going to lose players to injury. But as we saw last year, you, could, you can overcome it. Now, this year, it's, it, it's been more. <laughs> it's probably been one of the most injured team in football, okay? Um, and, and, and I understand that. And that could derail seasons even for great teams. Um, but still, there are lessons to be learned. As a coaching staff, you have to adjust. Not, not just during the season, but during games. When things aren't working, you can't keep trying to spoon-feed it. you got to adjust. 
And this team has not done that. This coaching staff has not done that. And they have failed because of it. And, and I will always have respect for Doug Peterson because of what he was able to, to, to help this team, this organization do. But he has got to get better. He's got to get better. Because it's been a joke this season. It has been monumentally bad what a coaching job he has done. Injuries withstanding, it has been horrible. When you look at this offense coming into games where you really should be at your best and, and you look like crap, more times than not it's a three and out on your first possession every single damn week, not scoring points in the first quarter and most of the first half every week. And, and tonight you're going up against a 31st ranked pass offense and you can't do anything? Nothing? You have guys that didn't show up for this game. And that's unacceptable. Look, you're going to have losing seasons. But when you have a team where guys aren't showing up week after week, that's embarrassing. That's a slap in the face to, to this fan base. That's a slap in the face to the players who are showing up who want to be a part of it. And you're not showing up. And you're going to use injuries as the excuse. And you're going to use one excuse. Or, or the fans booing. Oh, the other. How can they boo? Grow a pair. It's Philadelphia. This is what happens. When you play like crap, we let you know. That's, what it, that's how it is. That's how it always has been. That's all, how it always will be. Whether we win a Super Bowl, whether we win five Super Bowls in a row, if you play like crap, we're going to let you know. Particularly damn well if you play like that against the, the most hated team in this town in the Dallas Cowboys. You play like crap against that team at home in a game that you have to win, we're going to let you know. Because guess what? We have a pulse. Which is more than I could say for what this team's looked like the last few weeks. Today they look like the freaking Walking Dead. I mean, they were playing in New Orleans, you know, the, the home of voodoo and everything. They look like freaking zombies out there against the, against the Saints. And I know the Saints are a great team. They're having a tremendous season. But damn it, show up! Embarrassing. 48-7, to seven, there's nothing else I can say, okay? What can you say after a game like this? It's been a few times over the past few years that I've seen this team not show up for games. But tonight they didn't show up. They didn't. Across the board, they didn't show up, and it's embarrassing. It's, it, it's embarrassing. Absolutely a joke. That's the one thing. In this town, coming off a Super Bowl or not, that drives us nuts. That's the worst thing you can do, is not show up for games. And this team didn't show up tonight, and it's embarrassing. They deserve every bit of the laugh, laughter they get from other fans and from the, the media. And they deserve all the criticism that's going to come to them. You play like shit, you play like that, you deserve it. And it's not the fans' fault that you didn't show up to this game today. And it's not our fault of what you did in the first half in that game against Dallas last week. Not our fault. Eagles Nation, um... There's nothing that I can say that we're not already feeling about this season. <laughs> it, it it has been it, it has been rough. It's been more not, disappointing. Isn't the word? It just isn't. You know, um, I want them to get it right. I want to see some compete levels on this on these teams on on, on these players. We're talking about players 
who, who are Pro Bowl caliber players. I want to see them show up the rest of the season. I want to see them show up. And you know what? Week to week isn't guaranteed they're going to win even if they do. But I want to see what type of heart some of these players have on this team. Because a game like this, uh-uh. No. No. I don't care if you're playing the Saints, if you're playing the Giants, if you're playing the Redskins, if you're playing whoever, Dallas. I don't care. You better show me something the rest of the season. Or how many players on this team can take a hike after this season. And the coaches too, whoever's involved, they can take a hike, because you you can't you you can't go into games and not show up, not not in this town, no, no. Injuries was I don't care, you show up the games. There are changes that have to be made starting this off season. This team has to get better in the draft. Uh, uh, they can throw money at Le'Veon Bell and bring him here. That's fine. But you have to hit in the draft. It starts in the draft. And for more times than not, this team has not hit in the draft. And they got to get better at it. Joe Douglas, Howie Roseman, whoever it is, got to get better at it. Must. You want to say it's a mulligan type year, coming off a Super Bowl, whatever. Hey, I don't look at seasons that way as a fan. I, I want this team to succeed every season. As far as I think there's talent on this team to succeed with, I expect this team to succeed season after season. And when they don't, it falls on the players, it falls on the coaches, it falls on the organization, the ownership, the powers that be. It's not the fans' fault. It's not us. Okay, because we boo at halftime. Of a game against Dallas, it's not our fault what you're doing on the field. These players can talk all they want about looking in the mirror, about this and that and the other thing. I don't want to hear it anymore. I want to see it. Play with pride. <sighs> Embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing. Um, I want to finish this video with saying to Eagles Nation and anyone else watching this video, football fans, sport fans, whoever watches this video, I know it's the week of Thanksgiving uh, here in, in the States, of course. Uh, I, I want to wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. I hope you have a great time with your family and loved ones. Um, remember the people who, who, who aren't so fortunate, you know, think of them as well. Enjoy it. Uh, enjoy being with family and, and, and having a meal together. If anything else, you know, that's what Thanksgiving's for. That's what it's about. Um, me, it's just going to be me and my mom here at the house and I bring her over. We're going to have, you know, Thanksgiving night dinner and, and, and whatnot. Um, and it's going to be a nice little quiet Thanksgiving here for me. Um, but nonetheless, I look forward to it. A little time off work, you know, that's always nice. And of course, Black Friday the next day. Um, so look, have a happy Thanksgiving. Whether the Eagles win or lose, whatever week to week, it's still Thanksgiving. It's still, you know, a holiday to, to look forward to. We might not have a football team to look forward to as much this season as we did last season. But, you know, there's still our Eagles. We're still going to love them. Uh, we're still going to hope for the best week to week, even though this season is, is a losing year. Um, we all have to hope that they make the necessary changes with their own self, not just, you know, the player-wise, but the coaching staff. They have to make changes going into next season. You know, they have to adjust. And if they don't, it's going to be the same, same as we're seeing this year. And I hope to God it isn't. I really do. Um, as I've said for 30 minutes, it, this has been very frustrating. This is this is an embarrassment tonight. Um, but I, I'm still here on YouTube making the vid, right? I'm wearing the colors. I, I'm still going to make this video here as tough as it is for me after a loss. Oh, excuse me. See, it's just, it's just I'm, I'm getting all choked up here. Yeah. <laughs> After a loss like this, it's hard for me to make this vid and put it on, on YouTube. But you know what? I do it. I, I'm going to do this every week. 
Winning seasons like last season, losing seasons like this season, you're always going to see me after games. You know, talking about the game, trying to break it down as best I am. I'm not an expert. I'm not an NFL network or ESPN or one of these other networks. I'm just some full Eagle fan making videos on, on YouTube. But I do it because I want people to see what it is to be an Eagles fan. During the great times and, and the not great times, this is what we are. You know, this is a team that we care about. It means something to us here. Um, all of our teams do. And I know they, they, they let us down more times than not, and we get kicked in the gut and the balls and the teeth, whatever you want to say, time after time. But you know what? It makes the, those, those great moments that much more greater. That's why those mean more to us, I guess, in, in a way. Um, I am thankful for what they did a year ago. I am. But... I don't rest on that, and neither should they. This should have been a better year, and I know they they had a lot of injuries, and that's understandable, but this should have been a better year than what we've seen. It should, and I hope to God that some of these players, you know, show up the rest of the season, show us some. Because you know what, now it's about, now it's about uh, uh, forecasting for the future. It's about what players want to be here, what players are going to give us effort. You know, you might not win some of these games, but show us something. Tonight they showed us nothing, absolutely nothing, and that, that can't be tolerated. I don't care who you're playing against, what records they are. you got to show up, and, and the coaching staff, you got to adjust during these games, and they haven't done it. And until they do, this is this is what we're gonna see. And I hope I hope they, they can adjust. And Jim Schwartz will be gone. I have no doubt about that. After this season, he'll be gone. But you know what? Doug Peterson will still be here. Some of these other coaches will still be here, and they gotta show us something. They gotta do better. They have to do better. Because I don't care who you get as a defensive coordinator or other coordinators or other people to help. You know, with the other aspects of this of, of of this team, if 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 your head coach and and some other coordinators aren't adjusting, you're still going to have results like this, and it doesn't matter. You're still going to have the same results. So you know what? They better damn well make these changes and and make them quick. Otherwise, you're going to be looking at this for a long time, and that's not, not something we want to see here. Other fans want to see it from us, but we certainly don't. Want, we certainly don't want that. And and these the powers that be have got to do better. Have got to do better. You know, and it always starts in an off season. And it starts in the draft, and then free agency, obviously. But then you have to have those plans in place where you. It just it's, it's a broken record, but where you do adjust week to week. And the schemes have to adjust, and you have to do it during the game. This is one the thing we always said about Andy Reid all those years. He never adjusted in game. You know, it, it was the, the clock management issues, and it was this and that. And look, he had a lot of success here, and looking back at those years, and you marvel at it because they had a sustained success year after year. They were always one of the teams at the end, but his shortcomings were that he didn't know how to adjust when times weren't weren't going well. <laughs> During games and the clock management and all this and that, you know, people forget that, you know, and people see all the success he's having in Kansas City and oh, how, how those Eagles. We saw his shortcomings when he was here and he was a great head coach. He really was looking back on it. Yes, he was. But he had his faults and he had his flaws. And we saw that because he was here for so long. <laughs> and 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 he just had these issues with adjusting. And Doug Peterson does come from the Andy Reid tree. And look, he, he did great last season. Tremendous. But now this season, ah, we're seeing some Andyisms <laughs> that we all know, all, unfortunately, all too well. <laughs> i got to do a better job. <clears throat> Like I said, it's on him. It's on the rest of the coaching staff who will be here after this season. It's on the players who will be here after this season. It's 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 across the board. The or, or the uh, the owner, the organization. It's everyone has got to get this right. 
And they got some tools in the in the chest already. You got to build to. And you got to get this damn thing right. So again, um, 35 plus minutes here. Um, thank you all for tuning in to another wonderful week that we've had here in Eagles Nation. Uh, 48 to 7. Mm. Congrats to the Saints fans. As I said, I think your team is probably going to uh, represent the NFC in Super Bowl 53. Good luck to you the rest of the way. Enjoy it on Bourbon Street. You have a great team. You have a great coach, a great uh, uh, quarterback. Um, you know, and, and, and all the best to your team the rest of the way. They, they've, they've really shown to be a great team, and um, I know that, that their, their fan base appreciates it. Uh, I really do. And they've done a great job rebuilding that team through the draft. You know, with Drew Brees there, they rebuilt, you know, in the draft. The, the, the flaws that they had, they were able to rebuild it. And they've done a great job. They really have. So, um, Eagles season the rest of the way. Look, I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. Probably not going to be a playoff team this year. It, it, it is what, unless some miraculous turnaround happens within the next uh, 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 weeks to come. I, I just, I don't see it. I don't see any way that it could be. I, I hope I'm wrong, but I, I don't see it. And you know what? It, again, it falls on the players. It falls on the coaching staff. It falls on the front office to get it right, to fix this. Because 48 to seven is unacceptable. I mean, losing to Dallas last week in a closer game wasn't un, was was unacceptable. Losing this game the way they did, not competing, not showing up, completely unacceptable. So, um. What can I say? Tough one tonight, but we we've been through down this road before, haven't we? <laughs> we've seen this. Um, again, it's what makes that so special to us because more times than not, we've seen this seasons like this. So, um, Eagles Nation, you know, it is about putting the pieces back together again, um, hoping for better things past this season, and and uh, hoping that our team actually shows up some of these weeks. Uh, uh, not some, all the rest of the weeks, I, I, I should say, um, and shows us effort uh, the rest of this season because tonight was, was, was an absolute atrocious embarrassment across the board, and it's not to be tolerated. It's not. But have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Uh, enjoy time with your family and loved ones, and uh, I'll be back again next week. Another uh, week of football. You know, the season doesn't end tonight. Yeah, it keeps going. So, um, you know, we'll, 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 we'll be here again after the, the game against the Giants. And um, not much you can say after 48-7 to 7 that that's, that's positive. So that, there's that. All right. Take care, everyone.